Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I am a mess. <laughs> and I'm struggling. I was originally sitting in my chair so you could see this, but I have, you have to see this. <laughs> I have personally explained the process to you, Deborah. This is merch from Mara. It looks like whoa, and I, I love this. This one's so cozy. I got it a little bigger because I like long sleeves. So you should check out her merch shop because this will forever be iconic, iconic response. And I love this. So this video is going to be kind of rambly. There's no script. There's no planning. I just am sitting down, um, talking about my feelings. It is kind of evening. So I hope the lighting is fine. Um, but I'm just have been, like I said, struggling, but in a weird headspace, I guess. Um, I've been open before about my mental health. I, most of the time I'm fine. You know, um, I do go to therapy. I do take medication. One thing that is adding to all this is I'm very anxious because my therapist is leaving because she is going back to the States downside about the military. And the new person who's coming is a dude. And not like that is inherently bad, but uh, off the bat just makes me nervous. I don't know if we're going to jive well and there's only two therapists on this base and they'll both be dudes. So it's just limited options and I'm anxious about that. And then other things, I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling a lot of feelings. I feel, like, I don't want to say I feel disconnected from the book community, but I almost feel like I'm not super in it right now. Like, not super active. I haven't been, like, doing, you know, like, live streams or things. I don't know. I, I'm still active, but I feel weird. I feel like I'm on the outside, and there's the book community right here, and I'm just standing on the outside. And from no one's fault, but my own, and not even my own fault, I just, I don't even know how to explain it. I said this video is gonna be really rambly, so bear with me if you're here. Um, I've just, I felt a lot of pressure and that's on myself to, you know, constantly be reading so I could always have content, to constantly be finding things. I could make book community videos. People send me things and I, I have opened myself to that. I understand. And I'm just tired. Like I've been feeling uninspired with my content. And so I did get recommendations from other people and I've been, I haven't even really been watching booktube that much. So if I haven't been watching your videos, I'm sorry. And then when you notice later that I just start popping up <laughs> comments under older videos, mind your business. But I haven't really even been watching booktube. I've been watching other content and enjoying that. Some of it is inspiring me for things that I wanna try with my channel or things that I wanna to try to improve with things I already do. Like I've been watching a lot of vlogs and some things just I watch to enjoy and I feel guilty that I'm not watching booktube content and not making enough content. Recently, I've been lucky if I have up one video per week. I've just not been in the mood. Even when there are things happening, I don't feel like filming a community video. I don't feel, I just don't feel like doing much of anything that is book community related. And I hate that because obviously this is a booktube channel for the most part. So there are those feelings. And then, like I said, with the pressure of reading in August, I read a lot because I knew that going forward, I'd have to slow, step back a little bit. And I'm really looking forward to not having a lot to, like I have some bigger books and it's just gonna feel good to go slower because I realized that if I continue on the path that I was with feeling like I had to put out a community video and feeling like I just need to read nonstop. I, I'm already feeling burnt out and I was gonna burn out just like completely. So I guess this is kind of to just talk about my feelings that I've been feeling in general about booktube, about my channel, and then kind of my, my process going forward. And also in a minute, I wanna talk about other things I've been enjoying. So this is kind of just a mess of a video which is on brand for me but I really just have to start listening to myself because often I don't want to record and I will force myself to anyway um often I'm like I don't really feel like reading I would like to do this and I force myself to read anyway and I really just have to stop doing that because it's eventually going to take the joy out of reading for me 
it's frustrating because I have, I have a lot of video ideas, I think of them or people recommend them or I see a video that I wanna try and I'll, <laughs> I'm like, sorry and I will write it down I have a whole list of video ideas but a lot of them depend on me reading books so I'm like damn it so it's like a long game long process so sometimes I get discouraged there and then just I, I don't know I've just been having feelings of not feeling good enough comparing myself to other people other creators which you should never do but it's I'm human so I do it um, you know, watching someone else's content. I'm like, dang, their editing is so good or dang, their vlogs are so good. And I look at mine, you know, I'm not gonna lie and say that sometimes when a video doesn't, you know, do as well, I do get in my feelings. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's human nature. And I, I try not to, but, and that's why I've forced myself so much in the past to do community videos, um, because I know that is what the majority of people want. I have my, my ride or dies that will watch anything I put up and y'all are so amazing, thank you. And ones I always see in the comments, but for the majority of people they want to see, you know, community. And I get it because I love drama also, but like there's always something going on, but some of it I'm like, is this worth reporting? You know, like, is this worth bringing attention to? Some, I don't know. I. And everyone may have their different standards. I guess I just have a different one. And lately just been like, I just haven't been able to. I just haven't been able to force myself to do it. And so I'm sorry, because I'm sure that's why at least the majority of people are subscribed to my channel. So then I worry that if I don't do those videos frequently enough, people will leave and thoughts. I'm sure all creators have all these thoughts, but I just wanted to talk about them because I've been feeling them. I have been struggling. That's my, <laughs> I've been uh, languishing a lot, if you will. And just feeling like long-term, what do I wanna do with my channel? I still don't really have an answer for that, but I hope you stay with me. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping that if I take this pressure off myself, if I allow myself to film when and what I want to film and to read when and what I want to read, that it'll feel less like I have to do this and back to I get to do this so that I can get back reinvigorated and, and re-excited. Because right now I don't get excited to make content. Um, and I don't like that. It should be, this is such a privilege to have, um, to be able to do this, to talk about books and to have the uh, subscriber base that I do have. I am so grateful. I am not trying to take any of you for granted, but I, I've just done it to myself. And so I am going to be cool, relax, like try to take it easy so this becomes fun again because that's what it should be. Um, so anyway, all of that to say, I have been watching and enjoying other kinds of content that are not booktube related and I wanted to share just in case maybe you, I mean, some of these channels are large so you probably know about them. Um, and just different things that I'm trying to do to just have something different to do because sometimes I don't wanna read it, I wanna do other things. So I have a lot of TV shows to catch up on. Carrie, I know you'll be happy <laughs> to hear about that also. Mara from Books Like Whoa, um, we were talking about watercolor painting. I know because she's been doing that and like, you know, like listening to audiobooks while uh, doing watercolor painting. And I was like, you know what, that sounds really nice. And so, yes, I ordered watercolors, which is an excellent segue into today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. And Skillshare has so many classes. I've primarily been focusing on like editing and vlogging, like video specific classes but then I was watching one of the channels I'll tell you about and they were talking about like an actual art class and I was like hold up wait a minute and so I went and looked and yes of course they have watercolor class watercolor classes so 
I finally got all my supplies in because I was literally waiting for, I got, I ordered it all at once, but it came in separately. And so I'm so psyched to, to do this class. Um, and it's by Venita and it's Easy Watercolor Autumn Postcards, five beginner friendly projects, which I think is perfect in September, it's fall beginner because I need beginner. <laughs> and um, it's a nice step-by-step. -step. I know it's gonna be ugly. I know mine's gonna be ugly, but I just want to try something different. But if you don't know what Skillshare is, by my description of this class, it's an online learning community with thousands of aspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. And so it's curated for learning. There's no ads, there's so many courses, short, long. Um, you can try as many out as you want. You're not limited to the amount of courses you can take per month. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, my lovely followers, if you are one of the first 1,000 people to click the link that'll be link that'll be put down below, you can get a free month of Skillshare Premium. So you can sample as many classes as you want to in that period, see if it's worth it, explore some different things. Maybe you want to start a new hobby, maybe you want to improve one that you've already started on. And so I would recommend Skillshare for that because I'm about to get my watercolor on. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video but i've been inspired to do things like this um by so she has a booktube channel but she also the channel that i've been primarily watching is like her travel vlog channel and it's carrie um carrie cakes is the channel and so she's a pretty large channel uh and a pretty large booktube channel but i've been watching her vlogs she lives in south korea and i am I just want to go to South Korea tomorrow. I love her vlog style. She just seems really nice. And also one of her vlogs, I was watching an older one. She was like playing guitar and singing Taylor Swift. And she did a voiceover and was talking about being okay with just being like mediocre at something. She was like, I'm, maybe I'm not great at playing guitar or singing, but I enjoy them. And I don't have to be amazing at every hobby. And I struggle with that so much. Like if I start something and I'm not immediately good, with, good at it, I'm like, it's over. And so I've invested <laughs> in these watercolor supplies. And so I'm going to do it just even even if I just continue to suck as just a form of a creative outlet that's different than content creation here for YouTube. Um, and so that's one channel I've been really enjoying. Evelyn from the internet. I'm sure people know Evelyn. And I've been watching a lot of her old videos and then anytime she does a live stream because Evelyn I think is one of the most hilarious people on the planet. And one of her videos she did was talking about how to, um, like what happens when you're a content creator and you, don't feel like you have creativity anymore or you're like in a creative slump which i have been feeling and so one of the things she was talking about was doing things and not posting about them like everything is not doesn't have to be done for content purposes every time you do something you don't have to post it on instagram or film a video about it and i'm super bad about that i'll just be doing something i'm like oh i should probably film this for a vlog clip or post this on my instagram story and so that is another thing that i need to work on just have something for myself and something everything i do doesn't need to become content and that sounds like common sense but i have been struggling with that so anyway if you have never checked out evelyn she has so many videos and they're she's hilarious i hope to one day meet her in person because you know we're internet cousins that's what she says and yeah evelyn's amazing oh my god i just went to my youtube and mara's got a video saying chatting about changes four years on booktube uh oh mara what are you changing don't be going nowhere girl you can't leave me i just got this chat this hoodie you can't leave Another content creator that lives in South Korea, she has a smaller channel than Carrie, but still a decent following. And her channel is Taylor with an E. And she is teaching English there. And I I don't forgot how I found her videos. Maybe it was recommended because I was already watching Carrie's videos. But I don't know. I have just been, I've always had different Asian countries on my to visit list. I don't think South Korea was super high up there. Now it is. I'm like, oh my God, I need to go to South Korea. I need to visit the cafes all these things so i love watching her videos as well and she's black living in korea so a different perspective um and i've been loving those i recently also found khadija bowe i think that's how you say it i apologize if i'm saying her name wrong oh my god one they are beautiful and hilarious and they do basically video essays on different relevant like cultural topics and 
not cultural, but like pop culture, popular, yeah, pop culture, relevant societal issues and just really great videos, informative, but also funny. And they uh, just have a really great personality and I've been enjoying watching their video essays. And so it's just, in, you know, these different things, like maybe they're not related directly to book two, but I've just been getting inspiration, ideas from watching these different types of videos. And then I've also been watching like a study tubers. I haven't found a specific one that I really like yet, but I've just been <sighs> inspired by that. I did order some new pens. Like, did I need them? No, but I just find it fascinating the different ways people like do note taking and the way they organize their desk and all of these things have been fascinating to me and I've just been enjoying watching different things. So if you feel in a rut or maybe you're just tired of watching a certain kind of content, this is all common sense, but I have, I typically will hyper fixate on one thing. So like I'm watching booktube, I'm only watching booktube. I'm watching true crime, I'm only watching true crime. And so I've been branching out and it's been feeling good. And so I'm hoping branching out, seeing other people's content in conjunction with taking the pressure off of myself to film and having to read X amount of books every month, is just going to equal a revitalized, inspired, creative, happy Jessica we hope right but i don't know i just the book community is a great place with some rough patches um yeah i'll say that i've also wondered if like my community videos are more harmful than helpful uh because sometimes it brings attention to things that like people need to know, but then also it's bringing attention. So more people are paying attention to a certain thing. And as much as I want to let people know about things, some things I'm like, we don't need to draw any more attention to this topic or this person, but I can only try my best. So I don't know. This video is a freaking mess. I should have written like a script or something, but I just wanted to sit down and chat because I've been a mess up here and there may be less one week there may be three videos one week there may be one or maybe there's two or maybe there's one in a live stream i don't know so i guess that's it i guess i don't have anything else to say um i've just wait actually i do because i saw this post on instagram last night and i was like i need to talk about that because yes and i saved it uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Can you hear old panting Patrick over there? Okay, well, I'm gonna do this last part while he pants. I'm sorry, Nigel just got back from a walk and he's tired, so hopefully it's not too loud. But anyway, this is a popular account that I see on Instagram and it's Matt Bernstein and he posted um, some slides and I thought they were really interesting and very timely and important. So I wanted to share them. Um, the first one says, abusing people in the name of social justice will never create progress. So he made a post the previous week and it was about, um, about lesbians and it was made to honor them, but some of the information I think may have been wrong or just like misstated. So they said, after the post began to spread across the internet, some were quick to make an understandable critique that the post implied that men were the only ones dying during the AIDS crisis, which is categorically not true. But what began as honest good faith criticism from some quickly evolved into disturbing, abusive, bad faith attacks on my humanity from others. We have all seen what happens when someone on the internet makes a perceived mistake, says the wrong thing, quotes the wrong person, articulates a point incorrectly, but nothing could have psychologically prepared me for the comments I would read in the coming days. And they're really awful comments. And then he said, there is a difference between a well-meaning person who is still learning and a person who has fully committed themselves to bigotry and causing harm. I will repeat that. There is a difference between a well-meaning person who is still learning and a person who has fully committed themselves to bigotry and causing harm. 
When we ignore that difference and project the same level of scrutiny and anger onto anyone who doesn't think exactly the way we do, we are not doing the work. We are not holding people accountable. We are performing outrage for the sake of social recognition and moral absolutism. And this is a tweet from Monroe that says, you know you have some self work to do when wokeness becomes more about catching others out than it does helping them improve their worldview. This ain't a competition, it's a process. We cannot delude ourselves into believing that tearing down anyone who we have a slight disagreement or misunderstanding with will ever lead to any kind of progress. It won't and it's exactly the type of behavior that prevents growth in the first place. And I was just like, because I feel like sometimes, especially in the book community, I feel, I don't know if it's because of the panorama or what, or just, I don't know what it is. It makes some people in the book community so hyper aware of a lot of things that they pounce on people. Now, like he said, it's a difference when someone has fully committed to bigotry. Like they constantly, repeatedly tr double down, triple down, die on this hill of being a bigot. Totally different than a person who may have misinterpreted something, may have misspoke, maybe shared something without checking the resource. There's a total difference, but I feel like I'm not doing gen any ex specific example because y'all know y'all have seen it many times something happens and it's just like a pile on so quickly and I hate the word woke I really hate it and it gives people on the right they when they see stuff like this even when people are doing it from a good place like a well-meaning place it gives them the ammunition to, s to scream at us about outrage and cancel culture and woke mob and I just wish people could take the time to not immediately react and stop this, these pylons that happen when the situation did not warrant that. And um, I also, what did he say? I could just go so far from we are being this book community so welcome and open to this person read this book maybe they're new to the book community they didn't know any about any drama associated with this author and then immediately it's sub tweets and quote tweets like oh my god i can't believe you just say you hate such and such group and go like you should just go to hell like are we are we serious though it's it's really like it's taking it too far sometimes there's valid critiques there's various levels of things that authors have done or people have done but it seems like everyone comes at it equally with like this person was a jerk on twitter and it's like and then this person committed sexual assault and it's just like they're, they're not the same you know like i don't know moments like this give those people the candace owens and the ben shapiro's of the world ammunition to say see See, when they did this here, they always attack. Woke mob, they attack one of their own. And it's one of those reasons, I think one of those reasons why I feel like here's the book community and I'm on the outside because I feel like I just, I'm like, uh, no. Like some things, and I don't even, for the worst things, I don't even know if I fully agree with dogpiling on anyone on Twitter, but that's a different conversation. It's just a lot. And I want us to be better than that because we are supposed to be well read and, you know, empathetic and understanding and open minded. And we're supposed to allow people to make mistakes. Now, that is not repetitive, purposeful behavior that you can tell where they're, you know, they're not taking critics, they're not taking feedback or, you know, they're not, they just keep doing the same thing over. Not that. People should be allowed to make mistakes. And people, it's hard on social media, but I don't know, find some better way to say, hey, maybe is that what you meant? Or maybe, hey, that's not the best place to do that instead of going on the attack and automatically assuming that person came from it, from a negative place or with malintent and then attacking them for the world to see and then for everyone to jump in on. I don't know. I don't know if I articulated that well. I'm not saying that harmful things 
shouldn't be pointed out or you know brought to light but oh we've got to find a better way we really do i don't know when that's going to be i don't know how it's going to be because on online spaces make that hard in general especially twitter but i don't know but anyway that was my rambling rant about feeling outside of the community mentally struggling feeling a lack of inspiration and no creativity no drive to create content and being over it so here is to myself giving myself space and room to just be and you know kind of go with the flow if you will and i hope that if you have been struggling with any of these things that you do the same and give yourself grace and grace and space <laughs> to just to take it easy and maybe the next time you see a take that you don't like or you think is wrong or something maybe don't immediately react maybe take a minute and maybe they read the replies or maybe just don't respond if it's not a big deal or if it is something really big that you feel really passionate about maybe you could dm the person and just be really polite i don't know so thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Again, check the link in my description if you want to get a free month of Skillshare Premium. You gotta be one of the first thousand people to click that link. But I hope you all are doing all right, you know? Hope you're taking care of yourselves. I, of course, have to holla at my patrons. Thank you so much for being a part of my Patreon. Thank you so much for the support. Y'all are amazing. Shout out to Bebe's besties, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Kristen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizabeth, Amber, Heidi, Maria, and Serena. And <laughs> The Nigel Lavandria stands, Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyrell, Demery, Rainy, and Salim. And big shout out to Bebe's admirers and friends of Bebe. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your support. All of you, stay blessed, hydrated, sunscreen, and moisturize. Check out the links in my description for a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.